But if we don't have the mobility, we can't even access those muscles. That's why we get to do the soft tissue work and the stretching beforehand so we can actually get in and recruit the muscles that we're trying to, to recruit. Um, if you just go straight in and start doing the exercises without doing the mobility first, you're not going to be able to access the correct muscles to get it done, and you're never going to be able to make progress. Uh, I want to talk about injury because to me this is probably the most important thing um, to figure out if you're going to stick with health and fitness long term. Um, see so many people come in over the years super excited, having goals, wanting to get started on their health and fitness routine and some type of injury kind of derails them and it doesn't even have to be a major injury it can be something where they start getting some pain which, which in fact major injury doesn't happen that often it's more of they start getting some pain and they take some time off and then um, it's really hard for the game to get back in the routine and so if you can't ever get past this injury thing you're never going to be able to make progress consistent over a long period of time and so um, i thought it was really important to talk about this and this is something that i've learned so much about in my health and fitness journey and um, been able to help a whole lot of people and I, I know that I can really help people get past the pain and the injury aspect of training um, by informing and also showing them how important it is to take care of their body because I think it's just such an overlooked aspect of uh, health and fitness when we're thinking about making progress we're thinking about setting PRs and getting our diet and in, in check and all this stuff so all those things are very important but learning how to listen to our body and take care of our body is going to keep us going long term so um, just real quick quickly I learned all this through uh, my career as being an athlete growing up and I always had some type of pain um, especially as a baseball player, my elbow was hurting. I'd have shin splints. Uh, I'd have um, back pain. I had all kinds of stuff happen and way too many things that, that way more than an 18 to 22 year old person should have. And I was constantly in the training room. And then I started CrossFit in, in 2010 and uh, I had, you know, ailments flare up from time to time and I could never figure out what was going on. And I would do physical therapy and things just never really seemed to get better until I really kind of took it on my own self to learn about my body and start paying attention to my body and figure out what's going on. And through all that, I've been able to learn all these things over the years that have been able to keep me from having any type of injury in 15 plus years of doing CrossFit, which, you know, if anybody um, list, goes on any message board for 10 seconds, if you hear the word CrossFit, you're going to think, oh, I'm going to get injured doing that. Well, I've been doing it 15 years. I've done well, you know, I've done thousands of workouts and I haven't had any injury. I haven't gone to the doctor a single time. Um, and so I want to be able to help as many people as, as I can to learn about that because it's a simple, the, the, what's kept me doing it over, over a long period of time is learning my body and listening to my body and understand what pain is, understanding um, how to use pain for what it is. It's just my body's trying to get my uh, attention and um, being able to adjust my training based on how my body is feeling. And that's as simple as learning the body, learning what it's trying to tell you. And so that's kind of what I want to talk to you today. So basically, let's talk about what injury is, okay? Basically, there's two, two different types of injury and they're both caused by stressors on the body, okay? So you think about stress, you know, stress is, we generally think of stress as like, I got a lot of stress, I got a lot of anxiety at work. Well, that is stress, but also when we're working out, we're putting stress on our body. If you take, if you're playing football and you get hit, that's a stress on your body, okay? Injury happens when we're, our body takes on more stress than it can absorb, okay? So if you think about a trauma, um, that would be some like in football, for example. You see, you're watching a football game and a guy gets tackled from the side and his knee goes in, okay? That's a very extreme example of it, but his body was not able to absorb that stress, okay? So if you think about it, like I have... Uh, little girls who are crawling around now. Sometimes they might crawl into the side of my leg. Well, they're not very heavy. They're not moving very fast. They hit the side of my leg. It's not really going to affect me. It's not going to, I'm not at risk for injury from that. Or you could say, I now have dogs. They can run fast, okay? One of them's 85, 90 pounds. He can run really fast. If he hit me from the side, same um, angle, there's a lot more likelihood that I might get injured. Now, hopefully, I've uh, my body would be able to withstand that stress or absorb that trauma, that specific trauma, but I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Now, if I get hit from the side by a 250 pound uh, NFL linebacker, my body's not going to be able to absorb that. I'm going to get hurt. Okay. You're going to see my knee go the opposite direction. So 
what I'm trying to convey there is the different levels of stress. All three, all three of those would be the same level of, uh, or the same um, impact on your leg, just different scopes. Okay, think about your one-year-old toddler crawling. Think about you know your 80-pound dog running, and then think about a 250-pound middle, uh, middle linebacker NFL tackling you full speed from that direction. All three of those are the exact same uh, impact on your leg, just different levels based on. Uh, what uh, is imp imparting that that stress on your body? Okay, so our goal is to be able to create our make our body be able to withstand more higher higher levels of stress. Okay, so um, somebody who is a ninety pound uh, grandmother with little to no muscle mass, their ability to, to absorb an impact is going to be a lot lower than somebody who is a twenty five pound weightlifter with incredible mo uh, mobility, and I'll we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so our goal is to be able to absorb more and more levels of stress. So you can also think about the, the same impact is going to cause injury to some people, whereas other people, it's not going to cause any injury whatsoever. They'll be able to bounce back. Now, why is that? That's not just because um, luck, okay? It's because certain people's bodies were able to absorb impact while others weren't. Um, that's why if you you know, going back to the sports example, there's certain athletes that are hurt all the time and other athletes don't ever seem to get hurt. Okay. Um, if you follow NBA, um, this is a great example. If you know who Giannis Antetokounmpo is, he's a, you know, the Greek freak, you know, he's an incredible athlete. When, in, uh, in playoffs three or four years ago, I was watching a game and he got, he landed and literally his knee went backwards and it was like, Oh my gosh, he just blew out everything in his knee. And just seeing it, you've seen it happen so many times that so many people, they've blown their knee out, they're out for a year. Well, he was playing like two or three games later. Well, how is this guy able, his knee is able to go backwards, and yet he's able to play two or three, three games later where other people, they're having to have surgery and they're out for a year. It's because he spent so much time developing his body that he was able to with, uh, with endure that, that stressor on his body, okay? Some people are in car accidents and they're able to walk away while others die. What, what, what's, how, or they break a bone or something like that. How is that? The same stress is going to impact different people differently depending on how their body's ability to absorb that stress. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at here. So that's, that's a trauma. That's a, it's a, a moment of impact. We want to be able to uh, withstand those. As we get older, that can be a fall, okay? I had this happen to me about six months ago. It was late at night. I was going out into the living room, and I tripped over one of our girls' uh, swings, and my foot slid out from under me, and I slammed my hip into the ground really hard onto the hard floor. It hurt really bad, but I got up and walked away. I just had a little bruise. But I was thinking, you know, if I didn't have all that muscle mass to absorb that, I would have, I could have broken my hip. And I see how people can so easily break their hip. And so our goal is we don't know when these trauma moments are going to happen. Hopefully you don't ever have one of those trauma moments happen, but they could happen. And our goal is to be able to set our bodies up to be able to absorb as much stress as we can in that moment, because in the, in the instance of a hip, uh, uh, breaking a hip, that can be catastrophic. Okay. Um, but the farm, you know, that's that's a very small percentage of people. The vast majority of them is they can't recover from the work that they did. And you, you'll typically hear this one as, um, I slept on, on my shoulder wrong, okay? You, you didn't hurt yourself when you were sleeping, okay? Well, I'm, I'm just going to start start by saying that, okay? You didn't sleep wrong and hurt your back or hurt your neck or whatever. It's stuff that you've done, accumulated work over a long period of time that led to that moment of, you wake up and you feel the pain, okay? So what happens is we're putting stresses on our body when we're working out. We're putting stresses on our body when we're working in the yard or playing with our kids or moving around for work, you know, and we're also putting stresses on our body outside, you know, financial stress, family stress, not getting enough sleep, driving around, all these types of different things. Well, eventually our body is going to reach a breaking point, okay? And like I said with the other instance, everybody has higher tolerance, everybody's body has higher tolerance as a stress. But for some people, maybe something you did in the gym was the final straw that broke the camel's back. And you wake up and you feel and you feel pain the next day. Um, so when, when that happens, that's our body's first attempt at, it's actually been given us signals if we would pay attention, but the pain is the first real attempt of our body to say, hey, something's not right here, we need to, t to pay attention, okay? So that pain is when we need to really start say, hey, 
I need to really start taking a step back and, and doing something because my body's trying to tell me if I keep going down this path, I'm going to really get hurt. And if you don't, if you, if you keep pressing through, eventually you're going to have this trauma moment because you're, you're in the red zone. Okay. Your, your body's in the red. It's telling you, Hey, I need some recovery. Okay. So can't recover means I've accumulated too much stress that my body has not been able to recover from. I need to um, do something or else I'm going to seriously hurt myself. Okay. So those are basically the two types of injury. Like I said, the second one is way more common, um, but it's um, an opportunity for us to realize that if I don't do something, this is going to turn into this. Okay. And then I might have to have surgery or something along that, which could easily have been avoided just by simply listening to my body and doing some preventive uh, work. Okay. So what does that look like? Why does all this stuff happen? Okay. And it comes back to mobility. Okay. And that goes back to the first answer. Why can some people withstand more stress than others? Okay. Why can, I saw a video recently of a guy, he set a world record. He did like almost 7,000 strict pull-ups in 24 hours. How can one person do almost 7,000 strict pull-ups in 24 hours and somebody else do 10 strict pull-ups and hurt their shoulder? How, what's the difference there? Okay. And it goes back to mobility and then it also goes back to uh, capacity. But main thing we're going to talk about is mobility today. All right. I learned all this stuff over, you know, 10 plus years of doing research. And then I read Tom Brady's TB12 book and he, he, was talking on all the things that I've learned. And his main thing that he talks about is muscle pliability. And I put the TB12 method on there. So Tom Brady learned that what he was doing for his body was not keeping him in the game, okay? It wasn't, allow, it wasn't going to allow him to play a long career because he was constantly having arm pain and then he tore his ACL and then he was not able to recover from that surgery and it got infected. And then he was worried he wasn't gonna be able to play and this was in his late 20s. Um, well, that's when he just started um, doing a lot of research on his own and, uh, you know, researching Eastern Mess and all these different types of things. Well, he learned about muscle pliability. And so then <clears throat> he hired this guy who literally would give him a massage every single day because he learned that the pliability of the muscle determines the amount of stress that it can absorb. Okay, so in his instant, he's thinking, I'm a quarterback, I'm going to get hit 50 times a year, or whatever it is. I need to teach my body to be able to withstand those hits because if I can't, I'm going to get hurt and I'm not going to be able to play. And it worked for him because, look, he played till he was, what, almost 46, 47 years old at a quarterback position, okay, where he was taking hits every single year by guys who were almost half his age and outweighed him by a good bit. So by, t by getting massages every single day, he was making his muscles pliable. So what that means pliable is that his muscles were able to disperse that force over throughout the entire muscle. So we can think about like my arm, for example. If my arm is super tight, okay, very constricted, knotted up, uh, a lot of uh, restrictions in here, okay, if I'm taking a force and it's tight, it's not able to disperse that force throughout all the, all of my arm. It's all, it's all going to be impacted on one specific point. You got to think about the force has to be, has to go somewhere. All right. It's simple physics. A force is absorbed. It has to go somewhere. Okay. So it either goes all to the muscle where it's super tight, or if it's looser and pliable, it disperses that force out throughout the muscle. Okay. The more muscle fibers that are able to absorb the force, the less likely we are to have a, uh, a traumatic negative impact from it. Okay. That can go for any part of the body. The same also goes when we're exerting force. Okay. So when we're pressing overhead, if our muscles are super tight um, and constricted, we're not recruiting very many muscle fibers to be able to exert that, that, that uh, movement overhead. Okay. So if we do that consistently over a long period of time, those smaller amount of muscle fibers that we're using are going to get overworked. They're not going to be able to recover. And eventually we're going to, to get hurt. And on the flip side, if we have pliable, flexible muscles and we're able to um, disperse that force throughout all a lot more muscles, we're going to be able to um, recover from that and be able to keep moving for a long period of time. That going back to the pull-up example, the reason somebody's able to do uh, 7,000 pull-ups in 24 hours is because they're losing using a ton of different uh, muscle fibers to do that movement. They're doing using all their lats, they're using all their all their biceps, they're using all their shoulders, all their all their uh, forms. Whereas if somebody's super tight and they're not able to use a whole lot of lat, they're using mostly teres and a little bit of bicep and they're going to overwork those smaller muscles. So the goal is to improve our mobility so that we can improve our muscle pliability to absorb and also exert force. So both sides of the uh, force. So 
for the trauma, we want to be able to absorb uh, impact on our body throughout as many muscle fibers as we can. We also ha want to have strong and plentiful muscle fibers, which we build through strength training, so we can absorb more. On the flip side, we want to be able to recover from that work. We do that by um, doing work uh, and spreading it through a wide variety of muscle fibers, okay? Um, now, with mobility, it also comes with being able to recruit more muscles, okay? So with the upper body uh, example, if our shoulders are really round and forward, we're never able to access our lats, which our lats are meant to be the strongest move, mover in our upper body, okay? We don't just use them for pulling, we also use them for bench press and pressing and stabilizing and front rack, all these different movements. <clears throat> Whereas most people, we sit all day, we sit in the car, we sit um, at, at our desk, our shoulders are, it starts in, at school when we're sitting in a desk. Our shoulders are rounded forward, so we can't really externally rotate our shoulders to access our lats. So what happens is we have to compensate somehow, which is the next thing our body is going to compensate. We have to pull our shoulders up and forward, which is why our traps get so dominant. That's why we spend so much time doing trap release in class, because our traps are so dominant because our shoulders are getting pulled up and forward in order to get movements done that we can't, all you have to do is pull your shoulder up and forward and then see, I can't even engage my lat at all right now when my shoulder's in this position. Now if I pull my shoulder back and down, all of a sudden I can engage my lat. Okay, so that's what happens. Our body compensates and then it's going. It's super smart. Your body's gonna find a way to get something done, okay? Um, it's going to work around whatever pain or limitation it has to get the, get the task done that's required of it because our bodies are very smart. They're going to find a way to, to get it done. But what happens is we start using the wrong muscles for movements that are bought that were not meant to do those movements they're way smaller muscles they're going to get overworked way faster because we're not using near as much muscle uh, fiber they're not meant they don't have the great upside and so those muscles are going to get overworked that's why um, especially when people start at, at Coyote that you know the first year is incredibly important because most people are coming in with really bad mobility they're not able to access the right muscles over time they're going to build up the capacity, build up the range of motion because we spend so much time doing it that eventually they're going to start actually engaging and using the right muscles and they're going to be able to build capacity over a long period of time. But you have to get to that point. Um, what happens is you're going to plateau. First off, if you don't have the range of motion to use the right muscles, you're going to plateau because you're not using the correct muscles. You're using way fewer muscle fibers to get work done, if you think about it that way. And that's also going to lead eventually to injury. Okay, so if you're hitting plateaus consistently in the gym, um, it could be because you're lacking range of motion, you're not using the muscles correctly. Um, or if you're getting hurt a lot, it's probably because you're not using muscles correctly. Okay, so it goes back to, you know, we have five, over 500 members at Coyote. How come some people don't ever get hurt? And then some people seem to always have something going on. Well, it goes back to range of motion. It goes back to capacity, okay, muscle capacity. We're using the wrong muscles. Um, we're not recruiting enough mus muscle fibers when we're doing it, so we can't perform the movements the way they should be performed, and we can't recover um, from those movements um, in the workout and also after the workout. So finding a way to get, get our body performing optimally is going to allow us to quit compensating, okay? And then the, the other bad thing about compensating is then we start overusing uh, muscles to get something done because our body's so smart say our left shoulder is bothering us, well now we're going to start favoring to our right side, well then we might end up over overusing our right side, which used to be our good arm, and then it gets overused, and then it can't recover from that so much stress because it's doing two thirds of the work all of a sudden, and now it gets hurt, okay? So that's when you can really have the major impact on uh, injuries when you're overcompensating. All right, so hopefully that's a, like, we could, we could talk for an hour and a half about this, but um, this is a very short, um, demonstration of injury and why it occurs. Okay, so I'm, I'm, you're probably saying, well, what can I do to avoid that? All right, so like I've mentioned, mentioned a million and one times, improve mobility. That's why we spend so much time in class doing mobility because that's what 99.99% of our members need is improve mobility. So every class, we structure the mobility the way that I have done the research to find is the best way to improve your mobility by doing soft tissue work first, then stretching, and then strengthening exercises in the smaller muscles that we don't get used a lot. Okay, that's why we do the thoracic rotations, the standing wire raises, the bent over rows, all those types of things are meant to improve muscles <coughs> like the lower traps. We spend a lot of time working on the glutes uh, because 
those muscles don't get worked as much and we need to be able to access them. But if we don't have the mobility, we can't even access those muscles. That's why we get to do the soft tissue work and the stretching beforehand so we can actually get in and recruit the muscles that we're trying to, to recruit. Um, if you just go straight in and start doing the exercises without doing the mobility first, you're not going to be able to access the correct muscles to get it done and you're never going to be able to make progress. Um, I'll go around and see different classes at, at, at Coyote in different locations and there's some classes that people just don't really take the, the mobility serious. And those are the same classes where the people are always complaining about, I'm having a knee, I'm having a shoulder, I've got this, I'm, I'm hitting plateaus. They don't move as well, okay? It's because they're not taking the mobility serious. They're, when, they're doing, when we're doing lacrosse ball, they're, I'm, I don't use a lacrosse ball, I use a foam roller. Or they're doing the lacrosse ball on the wall or whatever it is, as opposed to really like, I'm going to hammer this portion of the class because I know this is the biggest... Um, most important thing for me to do, I'm going to really focus on this period. Yeah, I'm going to spend the time talking, but I'm also going to focus on on Im improving uh, mobility during this period. Um, and then over time, they're going to be able to start actually accessing the correct muscles. Okay, so number one is improving mobility. Now, everybody has a few areas of um, mobility weakness, so to speak. Okay, and adding a little bit of extra work on your weaknesses every day can go a very long way. So for me specifically, I know every day I really need to do my trap release. I need to do my static chest and shoulders. I'll do a lacrosse ball in my, in my traps and I mean in my lats and my uh, uh, scaps. And then I do my couch stretch every, every day because I know those are my biggest weaknesses for my mobility. And what happens over time is that uh, my body starts feeling better and then I'm, I'm, my strength um, numbers start going up pretty quickly because I'm all actually, actually starting to access the correct muscles when I'm doing movements. Okay. So it doesn't take long. It can be five minutes of focus work, but that's what I talked about at the beginning of this, of this video is learning your body, knowing your holds. So every day spending the time in class, um, on the mobility and don't skipping the mobility extra work that we do, you know, the 15 minute sessions every week, making sure you make, make time for those, not skipping the cool down. Okay. Stretch at the end are all extremely important, but also knowing your own mobility, weaknesses and limiters, and spending an extra five minutes a day on those specifically can make drastic improvements in your mobility, okay? Number two is listening to your body, and I said that at the beginning. Pain is um, just your body's way of trying to get your attention, okay? So when you feel pain, not freaking out and saying, oh, I need to go get an MRI. No, all it is is your body's trying to get your attention, okay? So it's, hey, I got this... My shoulder's kind of bothering me. Why is it bothering me? That's, this, is, this is the process I go through. Why is my shoulder bothering me? Okay, what did I do yesterday? Maybe what did I do the day before? Okay, all right, we did a lot of pulling yesterday. We did, um, maybe we did toes to bar two days ago. Maybe I did some uh, strict pull-ups yesterday. All right, my lats are probably pretty tight. So let me go stretch and see how it feels. Oh yeah, my chest is really tight. My lats are really tight. Uh, my traps feel pretty angry at me. So let me spend a little bit extra time working on those specifically today. And then tomorrow when I wake up and, and then I'm going to see, hey, is it feeling any better? Yeah, it feels a little bit better. I can still feel it, but it feels a little better. That means I know I'm on the right track, okay? So by the time you're feeling pain, you're, you're kind of behind the eight ball at that point. So you got to spend some extra time working on it. So for me, I always try to spend two or three times a day working on those areas that I know are going to release those pain, okay? So going back to the uh, can't recover um, uh, mobility uh, thing we talked about earlier, when we're tight, certain muscles get overworked because we can't disperse that force throughout the whole muscle. And so <clears throat> going back to the, the trigger points of our body or paying attention to where the pain is. So we got to figure out what, what, what muscle is overworked and tight and is causing that pain. So for me, I think about, I'm thinking upstream or downstream from that specific pain joint. Okay. So if it's my knee, I'm thinking what's above my knee, um, that could have caused that or what blow my knee could have caused that typically I've been doing this long enough I usually know where where to go to for certain things. So I'll think about what movement was I doing yesterday? Okay, what muscle was I using in that movement? Let me go find around dig around with a lacrosse ball or with my thumb or with my elbow or whatever find some pain Feel what area hurts worse than than other areas and know all right. This is the muscle that's overworked. It's tight it's uh, it needs some some uh, work, so I'm going to work on it with a lacrosse ball, work on it with my thumb, work on it with my elbow, whatever it is that I can get into that area and and break that muscle up, get some blood flow into it, let it heal up. And I'm going to do that two or three times a day for a few days. And I know if I'm working on the right spot, then the pain is going to go away after a few days. Okay, so that's what I say by listening to your body. I do that process probably 20, 30, 40 times a year. Okay, so 
I'm not saying I don't ever get pain. I get pain all the time, but I know what to do about it. I think about the pain. What, 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 what have I done the last few days that could have caused that pain? Okay, what muscles what was I using uh, when that pain, the, 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 the days before that pain uh, occurred? What, okay, let me start finding, digging around those muscles, figure out the issue. Now let me do some soft tissue work on that two or three times a day for a few days until the pain goes away. And if it hadn't gone away, hasn't gone away, <clears throat> then I know, okay, maybe that's not the muscle I need to be working on. I need to find another muscle. And that's the troubleshooting thing. Keep, to keep working on it until you find the, the solution and the pain goes away. The last two things that you can do, and these are outside the gym, reduce your stress, okay? So we're stressing ourselves in the gym every single time we come to the gym, okay? So... Um, you got to think if I'm import, imposing too much stress on my body, how can I reduce stress outside the gym? Okay. Um, how much, how am I, uh, uh inducing undue, undue stress on my body by worrying too much or running around like crazy and not drinking enough water or driving, driving a lot and not stretching. Um, you know, there's a million and one ways we, we in, impart stress and there's a lot of stressors in our life that we just can't control, but maybe we can learn to to um, eliminate some stressors undo that are un, that are extra in our life that we don't really need, or maybe there's um, ways that we can handle our stress better. Maybe we can start going for more walks, getting more sunshine, working on some breathing exercises, trying to get more sleep. All those things can help us just reduce our stress level because remember, our body looks all stressed the same, and eventually we're going to hit a breaking point. And once once we're over <clears throat> over the breaking point with stress, something's going to break. Okay. And then lastly is folks uh, increase focus on recovery. And that, that goes hands in hand, hand in hand with reducing stress. Um, trying to find ways to get a little bit extra recovery outside the gym, whether it could be trying to get a little bit extra sleep at night or, um, you know, like I said, going for a walk, trying to focus on some breathing exercises, trying to make sure we're getting enough food. Um, all those types of things, um, in, in, in adding increased uh, recovery, you know, instances like sauna, you know, massage, all those things are extra. Um, but just a little bit extra uh, focus and intention when it comes to recovery can go a long way as far as increasing our uh, ability to, to manage stress. So remember, all this is caused by our, we can't recover from the stress and part of our body. So we either need to lower that stress or we need to increase our ability to handle that stress. Okay, so ideally we're doing both because uh, if we're doing both at the same time, we're getting farther and farther away from injury. And that's ultimately what the goal is. So Hopefully this helps you. Like I said, I could talk about this all day long, and there's a lot of specific instances with injury that we can talk about, but this is just a general overview of what causes injury and then what you can do to avoid it. Hopefully that helped.